What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm so hyped to be with you guys today. You know, at first glance, fighting games seem like one of the most, you know, narrow genre, right? You know, just two fighters on each end of the screen coming to box it out. But in reality, the fighting game is one of the deepest and strangest genres in the world. You know, even though the base of the genre may be just beating the crap out of your friends, the experiences it holds are diverse and unique. Oh, don't do that. And that's why, you know, we're going to be looking past all the big fighting game titles, past the more standard fighters, and highlighting six unique, incredible, and less popular fighting games that you have to check out. These fighting games are relatively new, you know, not from big name franchises or studios, and, you know, they have all strong netcode. Most have rollback, so they make for great quarantine games as well. You guys ready to get this started? Let's go. Three, two, one. So in keeping with fighting game tradition, okay, we're gonna let two competitors share the fifth spot, Rivals of Ether and Slap City. These two games both embarked on a dangerous task which leads many games to certain doom. They tried to make a game like Super Smash Bros. Melee. Smash Bros. is its own insanely unique entity in the FGC for how it birthed the platform fighter subgenre. Melee is unique for creating one of the most dense, difficult, and rewarding games in the genre. Plenty of games have tried and failed to follow in Melee's footsteps. But Slap City and Rivals of Ether aren't those games. First, I mean, both games made the Melee format more accessible and made the difficulty curve more sensible. They kept unique movement options like wave dashing, but made them considerably easier to execute. Both games also implemented their own aesthetic, Rivals going for a more 16-bit elemental theme, and Slap City going for a, uh, you know what? <laughs> I don't even know. Anyways, I mean, in terms of aesthetic, Slap City is probably the more unique of the two and one of the most unique games in the world. It's at once super cool and deeply stupid. But not stupid in a bad way, all right? Stupid in a very, very good way. Like in a this games, Falco is a giant powerlifting fish kind of way. I mean, just look at this business hot dog do combos. Rivals of Ether is visually unique as well, but it really has the edge in terms of mechanics. Rivals makes two massive shifts to the platform fighter. One, I mean, it removes ledges, and two, it removes shields for very timing and precise hard call-out parry function. These two changes are huge, but to keep it short, they make the game less campy, more aggressive, and a bit more freeform. The elemental focus also adds a ton of characters, specific stage management, and terrain shifting into the fray. Slap City keeps more of the core of Smash tenants like shields and edges. Its changes are more in movement and character design. Characters come with unique features like the business hot dog's ability to build up and spend loads of money to augment his game. And the movement system is designed to be even more freeform than Melee. Every attack can be performed out of a dash. Dashes can also be pretty much any length. Wave dashing is easier to control. You can just stall and make reads by charging attacks in the air. The game stores your momentum, making all this movement even more insane. And then there's Clutch Button, which jacks everything up even more. Where many platform fighters prefer to just deepen the fighter's side of the game, Slap City deepens the platformer's side. In fact, the game single player is much more about platforming and speedrunning than arcade-style battles. However, it doesn't, you know, totally outdo Rivals in terms of story or game modes because Rivals has, you know, tetherball and also a dating simulator. Both games have great online systems and just recently released new builds of their content. So now is a great time to give them a look. Sometimes, you don't really have to have complex things like wave dashing or tetherball to be unique. In the world of fighting games, it's often more bold to be simple. Fantasy Strike proves this point artfully. Okay, so this game takes all those really complicated hallmarks of the fighting game and just throws them out the window. Crazy directional inputs? <laughs> don't need them. Insane 70 hit long combos? Mm, don't need them. 17 different defensive tools? <laughs> I mean, you don't need these at all. Heck, you don't even need a grab tech. In Fantasy Strike, to beat normal grabs, all you gotta do is nothing. Forest. Nothing. The shell has spoken! This game makes a compelling argument that, at its core, the fighting game is a Rashambo, aka rock, paper, scissors. Frickin' paper! 
<laughs> Turns out rock, paper, scissors is pretty hype. And Fantasy Strike makes it surprisingly deep too. Every character fits into a clear fighting game archetype, but with unique enough tools and base stats that the cast feels varied and unique. Geiger is a great example. He's a traditional zoner, but he has some interesting features, like a super that pauses time and lets him reverse positioning. I'm in the corner? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're in the corner. The game also innovates on the HP bar, giving every character defined blocks with most hits taking away one health block. Chip damage exists too. Blocking too much will eventually lose you an HP bar. And yes, chip damage can kill you. Okay, so the last major innovation the game has is to the competitive format. Rather than just pick characters and their counters at the high level, competitors pick three characters, which then randomize to face each other. To win a set, all right, you just need to win at least once with every character, leading to a popular moniker. You're only as strong as your weakest character. This competitive system is ingenious because it takes advantage of Fantasy Strike's artful simplicity. It wouldn't work for many other games because of the mechanical barriers to learning new characters, and that's not the case for Fantasy Strike, where mastering the character is more about mastering their mind games. Fantasy Strike takes many parts of the fighting game and makes them uniquely accessible. HP is easy to read and into it. Moves and their counters are simple to understand. Combos aren't walled off behind inputs that take one entire calendar month to learn. Despite all of that, the game keeps its depth because the right decision is still hard to make. Baits and conditioning, game plans, wider understanding of archetypes and hitboxes, all that stuff still matters. To really ramp up the accessibility, Fantasy Strike free to play. Though be warned, you do have to pay to challenge friends directly. All the same, I mean, Fantasy Strike's focus on accessibility is very unique for a genre that's often obsessively niche and unnecessarily arcane. Hey, oh. Melon. Now, if the game were just less visually generic, you know, like Skullgirls, maybe one of the most visually unique games in any genre. Now, the visuals are very risque, but don't reduce this game to like just pure sex appeal. And while the character designs might not initially seem creative, their gorgeous animations set them apart from any other game. Plus, if you don't want to play as an anime waifu, you could just play as the giant saxophone who's Bando. <laughs> In terms of gameplay, Skullgirls adds a lot of small but vital changes to the Marvel vs. Capcom format. For example, the game has a unique system in place to prevent infinite combos. Even more importantly, the game allows for more customization than perhaps any three character squad fighter. This is huge because customization is a big part of the tag team fighter's appeal. You can create teams that not only suit you, but counter the opponent. In Skullgirls, you can choose between one, two, or three fighters. If you field less fighters, you can get more health and more damage and can regain some red health when you force a character tag out. However, more fighters give more options. Not only do multiple fighters give unique assist moves, but Skullgirls allows for custom assists. This is a huge deal in this kind of a fighting game because the kind of assist a character had often determined whether or not you could use them on a team. In Skullgirls, custom assists open up a whole new world of team building and strategy. In the end, you get a fighting game that feels like the classic Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but with a bizarre aesthetic, arguably better balance, and a truly game-changing assist system. It's a great game with great online functionality and a surprisingly strong story mode to boot. Thanks, love. Player one wins. In the second spot, all right, we've got a game that embodies the entire genre through its unique upbringing. This game is a love letter to the fighting game community. Oh, and uh, it started off as my little pony fan project. That's right, it's them fighting herds, or TFH for short. So TFH began as a project called Fighting is Magic. A few longtime FGC vets, artists, and programmers got together to form their own studio, Main Six. From there, they tried to create a fully functional fighting game based on the series. The project got way bigger than anyone expected. This is fan, a fan project, it's just fan art. We're not trying to make money off of this. We're not aiming for fame. It just, 
happened, resulting in Hasbro issuing a cease and desist, grinding the project to a halt. As the project looks doomed, My Little Pony's lead writer, Lauren Foss, offered to help Main Six recreate the game's MLP cast into six unique fighters. Shortly after that, the Skullgirls team let Main Six use their engine to build them's fighting herds. With the top-of-the-line game engine and with the renowned cartoonist, TFH became better than imagined. But TFH's origins and quadrape aesthetic isn't the only thing making the game unique. TFH has a fully fleshed-out story mode with unique opponents, dialogue, characters, maps, platforming, and art. It has a training mode that walks you through everything, and it has a very well-built online system with the unique Battle royale S mini game where you fight for the right to turn into a giant death bear. And for the in-game currency, salt. It really is an ode to the FGC. In terms of gameplay, TFH is like a kid in a candy shop. It's packed with advanced mechanics like dead angels, charge moves, air techs, push block, advanced movement, and so many combo tools. To put it simply, the game most resembles an anime fighter like Guilty Gear or Melty Blood. However, it differs from these games through character balance. Each character has a ton of damage potential, powerful supers, movement options, and advantage tools. Every character also comes with dynamic music themes which will cue and change the stage's background music whenever they take the advantage. Since the characters are all much shorter than normal, it also changes the way position and spacing works too. Things like cross-ups become all the more vital. TFH's combo system then adds another layer on top of all of this. They use something called Juggle Decay to prevent infinite combos while still allowing for freedom offense. Since most of TFH's combos, Juggle DK makes a character heavier until they have to hit the ground and pop out of the combo. However, Juggle DK also factors into how much, you know, super meter a character gets from being hit. So, hitting an opponent all the way up to max Jungle Decay is dangerous. Because the opponent builds a ton of meter and can deliver the hurt right back to you. Different moves also have different Juggle DK values, which opens up a ton of balancing options for the devs and optimization paths for players. Despite its depth, TFH is also shockingly accessible with one of the best tutorials in the FGC and only four buttons and a few directional inputs to learn. My mind is legit blown. I'm getting mind freaked right now. How in the world does this $15 game explain everything about fighting games. Everything. TFH essentially wants to put everything on the FGC wishlist into one game. Accessibility, death, singular player, training tools, online, and a psychotically affectionate alpaca named Paprika. Really? <laughs> you don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. But I've considered it. But in the very top spot, there's a fighting game so unlike any other that it's hard to imagine where it came from or how you would even replicate it. In the very top spot is none other than Lethal League Blaze. Lethal League is like if Jet Set Radio and Squash had a child. And then they lost that child in the woods and it got raised by a wild pack of fighting games. Everything about this game stands on its own, from the wild character designs and awesome visual effects to the incredibly fun music to the gameplay itself. Unlike in most fighting games, the goal isn't just to hit your opponent, but to hit them with the ball. The rock, paper, scissors triangle of hit block grab still exists, just reoriented around the ball. Now you can swing, parry, and throw the ball. The game is very simple in goal, but very complex in methods. There are special moves, you know, several different types of hits, and a few different easy to move and unique character options. However, the real complexity comes in understanding and manipulating in physics, momentum, and trajectory of the ball. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Bro! Do it just right and you can react, condition, bait, establish set play, and do all that fancy fighting game stuff. Lethal League shows just how flexible the fighting game can truly be. It shows how much you can just stretch that simple core concept of trying to hit your opponent. And in the process, how much fun you can have. Plus the music and the entire vibe is so uncharacteristically funky and lighthearted. So, hey, yes. why don't okay, I just sweep you guys? Oh, what? 
What? Yeah. Dude, I'm just... This is time for Come my on. comeback. Okay, never mind. All right, guys, with that being said, we've rounded out our list. What fighting games did we miss? If you fleshed out this list out to 10 games, what four would you guys pick? Okay, we got Pokin, you know, Nidhogg, you know, Dive Kick, Fight Crab, Arms. Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching.